Good to see you, girl. Good to see you, Sissy. Good to see you. Thank <laughs> you for the invite. I'm coming to see your son. I mean, come on. You guys got the stage acting, love for the craft all over. Talk to me about your son. I know. I mean, um, I'm just a proud mama, you know, yeah. because he decided to do a play with 13 actors, Winter's Tale. Um, nobody wanted to direct, so he's like, I'm going to direct. I'm not going to be in it. And this is his first directing job. So I'm really proud of him and I support for him. You know yeah I mean you have to be yeah. super brave to direct I mean come on I know I, I mean know. how was his process I mean he was very private about it and he was going he a little was very nervous private, I mean, he was very private very private and uh, you know a lot of the people like he knows all the people these are his friends these are people that he studies with at the Atlantic acting company okay some are from other some are from yet another acting school I forgot which one mm -hmm. but uh, a lot of them have graduated some are older okay. but they're all friends so uh -huh. there's already that bond and you know I just wanted to support these young actors who of have course. these big dreams and passion and you know and are putting everything into this it's, uh, it's sacred yeah right? yeah it's and beautiful. it's exciting too it's at beautiful. the same time are exciting. you fucking kidding me when i saw and hey, look at the new la mama this is a oh yeah yeah, yeah. that's the old one i wasn't sure this is a gut renovation oh. this is a 27 million dollar gut renovation <gasps> oh. mama still needs three so i know we need the money donate guys donate generously and come and come to the mama you should yeah. come everybody come oh this is so exciting i'm so happy <laughs> director of the Winter's Tale uh, from the Carnival Players. You know, uh, writing Shakespeare is not an easy job for anybody anywhere. Yeah. And it's a big challenge, right? So it's very remarkable to see somebody so young, you're 21, right? Mm -hmm. uh, directing the Winter's Tale. Let's, let's talk about what was the initial thought, the idea, the thinking process before you take on this this big undertaking. Exactly. Um, well, I always wanted to uh, do a Shakespeare uh, production, and I've always looked uh, to Shakespeare for like a ground, for foundation, for basic directing, and fa ha having actors play with actors, because most of Shakespeare's is just actors and their lines. There's n not much special effects. But in The Winter's Tale, we get this opportunity to have an arc that starts off in a more tragic sense and ends with a lighter tone and gives us more of a satisf satisfying ending as an audience, uh, especially with the hope that we are instilled with at the end of the show. Uh, there's nothing like that feeling. So I wanted to show, uh, bring a show uh, to an audience that is more hopeful, bringing the hope and bringing what could be possible? What could happen next with these characters? Why the Winter's Tale? The Winter's Tale is uh, a Shakespeare play that talks a lot about um, uh, untrustworthiness in between uh, relationship dynamics and also has a lot of themes of classism in it, where we see these kings that have to deal with their own insecurities that have bubbled up uh, through years and years of suppressing their own masculine thoughts where they have been overrided 
by the women around them in the world and they feel like they have lost uh, some sort of power, some sort of, um, some sort of characteristic that is fading away from the modern day patriarch and is a much more a sign of the past. And so that's why Winter's Tale, we can show this uh, trajectory of how to talk things out in relationships. Mm -hmm. There is always uh, the talking, the figuring things out with a loved one. That never happens in the Winter's Tale. And that is something that is the moral lesson that I would love to get away from, get from this play. Because the Winter's Tale at the end of the day is Shakespeare's only fairy tale. And I think there should be a moral lesson there. Uh, and in that lesson, we learn of how to treat each other better, especially when it comes to relationships, to love, to romance. Beautiful. You're only 21 and you have a very good sense of plot. Thank you. I was telling your mom that, you know, right? <laughs> writing Shakespeare, writing the language, writing uh, actors dealing with their passion, which is not an easy horse to handle, right? I mean, you have all that passion, your actors. How do you work with them? Um, how was the rehearsal process? For how long you've been rehearsing this piece? So we've been rehearsing this piece uh, for about uh, almost a month and one week. Wow. And we have had the opportunity to have every sort, every, uh, different days, every single day where actors come in and we can work with them individually on their scenes as well as, you know, characters, different conversations that happen in the play. The actors always bring the most commitment. I. As soon as the cast was set, I knew that this was going to be extremely... I can sit back and trust the actors to come in every day with each commitment because they do bring each com the, the commitment with them every single day. They are some of the most dedicated cast that I've ever had the grace of meeting, some of the most amazing actors I've ever had the grace of working with. And I will, you know, I've always uh, championed them and I will always champion them. And there is a lesson for me that I've learned where we always must have the cast and we must always work closely with them and always listen to every one of their requests. And there is a compromise between director and actor that a lot of directors uh, don't seem to take into consideration. Right. Um, which I think I wanted to really come out. Yeah, it was very interesting because my husband says, he's a fighter, a uh, trainer, boxing trainer, but he says that in the corner you always have to give the right advice, uh, that you don't want a lot of people in the corner, right? Sometimes you see fighters, they have three, four people in the corner with the fighters. And he said it could be one person only giving the talk. It seemed to me, and I don't know, this is the first time that I have the pleasure to meet you. Of course, I know your mama. She's a devoted, passionate artist. And of course, your dad, you have the genes all over from head to toe. <laughs> but this is your, excuse me, this is a fucking commitment <laughs> to do. And you are so young. And yeah, Peter Brook, I think he directed uh, Shakespeare when he was 25. 26. I mean, this is a hell of a challenge and can be very scary and intimidating. But here you are, very, very, very soft spoken. Mm -hmm. You're very sure about what you wanted. And I think that everything that you just said, it came across in the production. It came out beautifully. And I applaud the commitment, I applaud the passion of the actors. And of course, I applaud the, the, the fact that you took this big challenge, The Winter's Tale. So were you afraid in the beginning? Uh -oh. uh, like in, in, in your yeah. private moments, at, 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 in bed at night when you're checking your Instagram, and said, oh man, I don't know. If I, do you ever have any doubts, any insecurities going on yeah, I internally? Mean, I mean, I've, you know, you always have your, um, your you know, inner voice telling you, critiquing uh -huh. you, telling you, hey, maybe you should look at that again. Right. Uh, or, you know, whatever must be done before showtime, any right. sort of last minute decision. So I've, I've just had to silence that. I've, you know, right. it happens to all of us. Yep. But the only thing you can do is know how to take it, take what is important from that, and remain calm. 
Because at the end of the day, I have to be a calm face sure. for my cast. Are you a very zen director? Because it seemed to me that you're very zen, very calm. I, that was the impression yeah. that I got. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I would, uh, you know, it's only my directorial debut. So I, I feel like I'm still learning what my kind of... Thing. We all do, right? And, but I do feel very zen. Yes, I see that. Where... You must have a Zen because I cannot personally. I I I will I will lose a lot if I f freak out about something. If I you know start to worry uh, profusely. Right. I have to keep Zen. Let me ask you quickly: What makes you, in your opinion, what makes a good director? Like what kind of work when you sit down and watch movies at night? What kind of work drives you insane? Is it dad, mom? Fuck, man, I want to do that. I want to be able to, I want to be able to do that. What inspires you? What kind of uh, filmmakers drive you insane? Or stage yeah. directors, no, no, for no, that no, matter. No. Ex exactly. People, like, directing is uh, such a beautiful job because you get to work closely with actors mm -hmm. on uh, text. And I'm an actor myself. Yes. So I also uh, feel like I have an understanding on the other side of uh, directing, where I, I know what it's like to be given a note, I know what it's like to be told, uh, directed and told my blocking, uh, any sort of uh, critical feedback that I've been given. So I, I, I feel like having this other side, where I'm, a, I'm an actor-director, um, meaning that I'm much, I'm very easy to work with cast. I, I really, if they, if there's something that a castmate or an actor feels necessarily uncomfortable with or something they don't know how to approach or something they're just, it, it doesn't work for them, you know, I'm always going to be listening to that. I'm always going to be, you know what, of course, you know, take, you know, if, if it doesn't work for you, you know, try something else. Right. Because I don't want to force anything on anyone as a director. Mm -hmm. That's a big thing. That's what makes a director important to me. That's what makes directors good. Directors that let actors and trust actors mm -hmm. to bring out the performances. Because a director that is constantly, um, you know... Giving notes. Giving notes worried or giving notes that are vague and not very helpful or right. so uh, line readings those directors while they exist they it's harder for, to to work with so I feel like mm -hmm. having a balance of knowing yes I'm not going to force this on my actor but I also know that this must happen dramaturgically. So that is the balance that you have to have as a director. You have, a, have to have great instincts. Yeah, as absolutely. Well. And you, right? must, you must always know the show better than everyone. Because if you don't know the show, then it's going to show that your actors are not really also well aware with what's going on around them. Good. Um, I w w last question. I want to keep asking, but everybody has to go. You, you're tired. We're tired. we got to go to bed. My husband is waiting at home. Um, when you were sitting back there, what were you were thinking? Uh, I was thinking... It was kind of a fever dream, honestly. I, I, I was just honestly enjoying uh, the show because there's only so much I can do now. Mm -hmm. So I, you know, I have actors. There, there's some actors that... You know, don't want notes during the showtime. Some actors do. It's it's really that's how I looked at the show. So I really just let the show happen, and I become part of the audience. I've become one of the voices because that's a big thing in theater, especially in Shakespeare. The audience is a part of the show, very much so. We engage with the characters. The characters get everything, all their motivations from us, the audience. So during the show, I become part of the audience, and I try to just be there as much as I can for my actors. Beautiful. Well, well done. Congrats. Thank you so much. Oh, absolutely. Thank you.